So I'm going to show you how to play Unmatched through Tabletop Simulator. What Tabletop Simulator is, is a game or more just a virtual environment that will let you insert various different um, tabletop games into it. Pretty much any game that you can make the pieces for, you can do in Tabletop Simulator. This game does not try to um, enforce any of the rules. It just gives you an environment where you can play that game with someone else online. Tabletop Simulator is available through Steam. Steam is kind of a um, distribution service for games. You can get a bunch of different games through Steam. So it's just one place to go to find all of them. So once you purchase Tabletop Simulator through Steam, Steam. Let me show you how to install Unmatched. I'm going to click on Tabletop Simulator there. And this is what people don't ever find because it's all the way over here to these little dots. I'm going to go to the workshop. And then once you go into the workshop, you can click here and you can search for Unmatched. And we will see this pull up here. We are going to go with the official unmatched and not any of these other variants that people have made. And this is unmatched official. What we'll need to do is scroll down here and this button right here. For you, you will need to click this button to subscribe. If I click it, I unsubscribe because I'm already subscribed. That's kind of like how the YouTube uh, subscribe button goes. Once you click that, it's basically there. You really don't have to do much. So now we can just back out. And then we'll just go back to here and then we'll just click play to play Tabletop Simulator. And we'll let Tabletop Simulator load here. So the first thing you may want to do in Tabletop Simulator is go here to this little light bulb. This is a tutorial. This will make things a lot easier for you if you go here and go through all of that first. This will bring up the thing that will let you um, start to... Uh, be able to manipulate things and show you what's going on with that. I'm going to hit escape and go to the main menu, but you may want to go through that. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a game, and there's three ways to play a game. A single player, a multiplayer, or a hot seat, which kind of simulates um, to different players. Let's go ahead and go into this here, and we'll start this up. And once we get to this point, we'll want to go to the Unmatched Official and click it. You'll hear all the pieces dropping. And it's ended up putting both these players on the same side. So we'll change the color and move one player over there. Okay. Let's go to player one here. So first, we'll just start with moving around so you can actually see things. First way to do that would be with your mouse. Just make sure you're not over any objects, which we don't have any out there right now. You can click and hold your right mouse button, and then you can move it around like so. You can also, at any time, whether you're holding down the mouse button or not, use your scroll wheel to zoom in. So that's one way to move around. Another would be with your arrow keys. And you'll see that that will just kind of rotate you around this way and that way. So that's the axes that that moves you on. Then lastly, you have, if you're familiar with um, first person shooters on a computer, you have the WASD way of moving with W and S being um, kind of a back and forth and A and D being a left and right, you can scoot left and right and move back and forth. And with these, you can pretty much uh, 
it around to any position that you need to on the board. Okay, so that's great. Let's start putting some pieces on here. Well, first thing we'll do is select a character. So go up here, select character. Boom, it shows you this board. And you see as you stick your cursor over it, they'll light up. You can figure out who you want to grab. We'll grab Dracula. And you hear a bunch of little pieces fall on the table. Two ways to get back to the table. One would be to click Reset View over here. Which will take you to that where you can now see your Dracula pieces down there. Or if we go back to the select character. You can also hit spacebar. Spacebar will always, no matter where you're at. If you get somewhere stupid and you can't figure out how to get back. You hit spacebar. And you're back to where you need to be. So let's go zoom down into here and take a look at Dracula's pieces. Hey, we can see we have Dracula. We have Dracula's deck including his character card. Dracula's health wheel. The health wheels look a little bit different. Um, and then we have the sisters, which are stacked on top of each other at the moment. Let's go choose a board. So we'll hit select board. And we'll go click a board. Let's go do Sherwood. And we'll hit space bar to take us back. Hey, and there's Sherwood Forest. So ways to move things around. Notice when you move over something, it highlights. So you can do that. Click to pick it up. You can move it and drop it. Here, this is all three of the sisters just stacked there on each other. Another way to move things is just draw a box using the left arrow key. Then you can pick up things and move a whole chunk of them at once. So the thing you can do the most manipulation with is probably the deck. Now if you just go over the deck and grab the card, it will just grab the top card off. And that may be how you want to do things, but you may not necessarily want to. When we place a card back, you'll see the deck highlight. When the deck highlights and we drop it, it'll snap back in there. Now let's say we want to pick this whole deck up. Instead of just clicking and grabbing a card like that, we'll click and hold, and you see the whole deck move up there. That lets us manipulate the whole deck so that we can move it around where we want to. When trying to figure out where to drop things, you can see the shadow below them, and that will tell you where it's going to drop at. Um, and that will help you align where you're going to drop it at. Now, just to go ahead and set this up, let's go ahead and go over to player two. We'll have player two grab a character. And then pick a Bigfoot. Hey, there's Bigfoot. And you can see Bigfoot's pieces there. He's got two health wheels, because, you know, he has one, and a jackalope has one. Put the jackalope could go up there. And you can lay things around. Alright. And we can see here on the board it'll have these starting positions on them just like uh, your normal board would have. Where's two? I can never find the starting positions on this up here. Show you the things that you can do with the decks here we can shuffle and that's going to be r and r is a way to like randomize anything that you have there so hit r you see it shuffle once you hit r a bunch of times and it shuffles it up real good and you know you can shuffle that up there too so now if we want to draw cards so the easiest way to do this is just move over it where it highlights and then click the number key of the number of cards you want to draw. It's the start of the game. We want to draw five. There we go. We got five cards. And you're like, hey, that's tiny text. I can't read it. Well, the alt key will let you look at anything that is down there. You can look at any of these. You can look at this. You can look at that. You notice that even though that from your perspective, Dracula's character card is upside down. It still shows it to you face up. Yeah, so you can look at pretty much anything this way, including Bigfoot and Dracula. 
So back to player one here. We'll shuffle that up good and draw five cards. So let's go ahead and start off with a simulated thing here. We're going to let's go ahead and draw like we're going to maneuver or something. And put him there. Do that. And do that. And we'll draw one more time. Oh! You noticed that, huh? There, huh? Yes! Bigfoot is really big, and a lot of times pieces can't move around him. So, sometimes you have to pick him up and rotate him. To rotate, while you're holding him in the air, you use the scroll wheel, and that will rotate him. Then you can rotate him at an angle where um, the other piece can fit freely. What was that one at? That one was there. Yeah. I think that works. I might have cheated on a move there, but this is just a little simulated thing to show you how this works anyway. All right. What does Bigfoot want to do here? Let's just say we want to go ahead and get rid of this sister here or make him waste a card. So we're going to drop a card out here. Now, if you just grab this card and drop it, it's going to be face up. Well, that's not good. So what do you do? Well, you hit F to flip. You see right now that all of Dracula's cards are not revealed what they are there. That's what Bigfoot's cards look like to, uh, to Dracula at the moment. So anyway, we've dropped a card there. Of course, Dracula, you know, if he wants to defend. Let's just say, yeah, we're not going to worry about that sister. You know, he flips it. We're like, eh, oh, well, that sister's gone. That's going to make a discard pile for him. Back to him because he has a second turn here. Just go ahead and draw. And we got another card there. And we're not going to move just because I need to get to a spot where I can attack here. Okay. We'll draw. And then we can do, oh, Feeding Frenzy. Here we go. Plus one for each sister in the same zone as the opposing fighter. Let's move that one there. We move things after the fact and cheat around here. Okay. Drop that. Bigfoot's got to defend. What does Bigfoot want to defend with? Let's just say that Bigfoot sucks at this game and he defends with this regroup here. So, flip these over. Regroup. That's two plus one for each sister in the zone, so that's going to be four. That's only one. Oh, Bigfoot has taken three damage. So, got one side that's a plus, one side that's a minus. One, two, three. He just took three damage because we made him suck. And then, of course, Bigfoot would do his, um, yeah, his card draw. Um, should have done a card draw on that other regroup, but I didn't. But that's basically how it goes there for um, doing that. The health wheels will let you... Um, can't move up past the health. You can go down. You move back up. When you hit zero, it just stops at zero. Now let's look at some of the other things you might have to do in a game. Let's say you need an opponent to draw a random card. Well, there's a few different ways you could go about it. Um, you can, you know, flip them all over, put them out here, and drop them down. And of course, if you try to hit R here, it won't do anything. But while they're all highlighted, you can hit G for group. That'll make them a deck of five there. You notice that says five over it. That's how many cards are in it. You see there's 22 cards there. It didn't say anything, so that's only one card. He has two there, 23 there. But anyway, we can go over this five here. Randomly shuffle it out and draw one. Then we just hover over here, hit four to get these back. And then this one, we can see which random card that was. In any case, it would have been a crash through the trees. Or we can draw and put it back in there. 
if we feel so inclined. And let's say we need to look through the discard pile. And let's go ahead and we're just going to drop some more cards here randomly into the discard pile. We can hover over that. We can right click and that will let us do some things here. You could deal this way, but we can also search. And search will show us all of these up here. And these are all the cards that aren't currently in that discard pile. And of course you can alt over them to see them really big. And if you need to pull one back out for some reason, as some characters have effects that let you do that, you could do that. You notice this puts an hourglass over it. That means you're looking at it. So if your opponent looks like they have their hourglass over yours, it means they're looking at your discard pile, which legally they can do. You know, as soon as we click this X here, that goes away. Another thing that can be useful is spread, um, which is another way to find things. We can flip the deck, right click and hit spread, and it just flips them out that way. Then we can just alt over them, find the one you're looking for that way. If you're like Arthur and have to look for Excalibur or something. Um, of course, we can highlight them all, flip them, group them, shuffle it back up a bit. Oh, I didn't grab the whole thing there. Got to wait. That's another way to grab all of that. And we're just going to clear everything now. Let's talk about um, custom saved objects. Now we can go in here and you can add any type of object that you want. We can go in here and we can add a die if we you know, feel so inclined to do it. Die is not generally real helpful for this game. It might be useful if you need to uh, you know, figure out who's starting or something with like a coin flip, a quarter, which will let you do a heads or tails, you know, heads or tails. It's tails. It's tails. You can, you can hit it when it's in the air, make it, make it flip real good. We're going to go into saved objects which these are going to be custom objects that we have made well such as we can go in here we can see that there are decks um, such as this is negan who is a custom deck that was in the uh playtesting guild um, this is negan and he has a bunch of zombies also got Sasaki Kojiro, which was the next one in the playtesting guild. And you can do these, and these will play pretty much like, uh, you know. Oh, oh, I dropped them off. Of course, if you drop things off the table, they reappear on the table, so that's nice. Sometimes that big pile, but, you know. They do get back on the table. And these custom pieces here, they do play pretty much the same as any other pieces once they're on there. They will snap into the spaces on the board just the same as the others. I swear I can never find these starting places. that and they come with the health dials that work the same way just doesn't have the fancy stuff and if the creator of the deck has made the artwork you get the custom artwork on there So you're like, well, where do we find these custom decks? Well, this is through the fan deck creator at Unmatched Dark Cards. And yes, Unmatched Dark Cards is, in fact, an actual web address. This has us here at the Unmatched 
maker we can click fan decks and we can see all these different fan decks that are available you can see the deck and who the creator of that deck is you can click on the deck and look at it and it will show you all of the things for the deck you can also we can also click on the name there and it will show us every deck made by this particular creator here I'm looking at some of tay's stuff here tay has made a lot of different decks okay so once we get here to king david we can see the things that he has has a character card with all of the different um, things for that he's made a card back we've got all of these nice cards in here so how would we get this into tabletop simulator well we're going to go up here to export we'll make sure we're on the tabletop simulator option here i'm going to right click download and hit save link as so we can make sure we put it in the right spot but you'll find it will be under documents my games tabletop simulator saves and saved objects i can drop it in here or i've got folders inside saved objects we can go hit a custom and we can hit save and that will save king david in there so now when we go back to tabletop simulator we go to objects saved objects customs king david should be an option in here now and you can see it takes a little bit for it to load up because it's a new deck and it's having to download all of it. And as a weird little glitch, sometimes they hover over the table the first time. We'll select all of them, highlight them, and move them, and they should drop down. And then we can see it that way. Hey, look at that. We've got nice things here that Tay has made for King David. So I'm not gonna go into exactly how to do all of this here, but you can actually import in um, shapes into here, such as my Don Quixote deck where I have made a custom Don Quixote figure. I've actually colored the um, mini there, this little um, token for Sancho and the health dials and of course we have Don Quixote there also you can see I kind of did the same thing here um, with Tay's Wyatt Earp deck I was able to find a fighter here and do that did a little bit of quick artwork on those just to spruce up a Doc Holiday a little bit Tay didn't know I did that and I came across this Mando deck here where someone had made the Mandalorian and he actually has a uh, nice Mandalorian figure already with it there, as well as a token for the child. So that's pretty nice. And so that's what's going on with it there. You can do all kinds of crazy things with this. Yeah, it just gets crazy sometimes. Man. Oh, look at that. They just throw on top of it there. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I can randomize this big mess of cards because yeah obviously you want to have fun doing this nonsense and of course there is one last thing you can do once you're tired of this game I'm done with this. So that's Tabletop Simulator. Hopefully you enjoy that and find hours and hours of playing Unmatched online.